All right, all right. So, we, so we have we have summarized uh, Romans chapter one and two. <clears throat> what I'd like to do now is think about something related to this. Um, the gospel is revealed in Jesus, the fullness of the gospel, but the <clears throat> the way of righteousness has not changed. It's always been by by grace through faith, faith in God, not in our works, not in our own righteousness. <clears throat> so I want to address one story in the Bible, which is the story of, of Job, which is a very difficult book for many of us. <laughs> because what Job is doing is he seems to have out of nowhere, uh, and I'm not even going to get into this whole thing if you read that book um, about God de making a, um, having a, someone come before him and accuse Job of being only righteous because of the things he can get from God. And God saying, well, we can test that, uh, which we may find very uh, distasteful to our sensibilities. I think there's reasons that we don't understand. I don't claim to understand all of them. I do feel like I've learned some things as I've meditated on this book through the suffering and pain I've experienced in my own life. And I think there are some some reasons that... that uh, are way beyond our, what our little pea brains can understand without, without God's help. So I'm not even going to address that. What I'm just going to address is the attitude of Job <clears throat> as, he's, as he argues with his friends and their attitude towards him. It's, it's, basically a, it's basically a story that shows us what's going on in Romans 1 and, and 2 as Paul is uh, talking about the, the uh, people in who had who are looking at the Gentiles and saying, you guys are so evil and we're so we're doing a pretty good job. Uh, I understand why God would judge you, but why would he, why would he judge me? And Paul is basically telling them in chapter two, you're going to get judged too. If you don't, if you don't have your faith in the gospel, don't think that God's going to play favorites with you guys. <clears throat> and that's essentially where Job was. Job was a man who had been doing what he thought was a pretty good job of being righteous. And as you read it, God says, you know, as far as righteousness by works goes, Job's doing, he's knocking it out of the park, honestly. He's doing a very good job. But I believe that Job was in a position where he was coming to have some trust in his own righteousness. He was coming to think of himself as good based on his actions, based on who he was, that he was, I think he was moving towards a place where he could have sadly come before the throne of God on Judgment Day, and instead of saying, I know my Redeemer lives, as he said in verse in chapter 15, I believe, um, and I trust him for my salvation and my vindication, I think he could have come before the throne of God if God had not corrected his thinking. He could have come before the throne of God with a basket full of vegetables like Cain did and said, look what I've done. And God would have had to disrespect that offering and say, Job, it's not about you. You have not done near, nearly good enough because I demand righteousness. And that comes only by connection to me, by trusting in me. That's where righteousness comes from. Uh, so Job was arguing with his friends, and his friends were arguing with him. Well, you must have done something wrong. Job's like, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> There's no reason for this to be happening to me. And he's, at, he's, he's right. He did not steal. He did not rob. He did not take wages from people who deserved them. He did not mistreat his workers. He, he lays all these things out as he's going through his argument. He has not worshipped false gods. He has not uh, <clears throat> uh, gone after other women besides his wife. He has not even allowed his eye, he says, to look at them. He's been very faithful to control his emotions and his passions. Um, he's been a good, a good man. He's been the kind of man that you would look at and go, that's the kind of guy I want for a neighbor. That's the kind of guy I want for a boss. He's, he cares about me. He's not just out for himself. Uh, 
you don't you could trust him with taking uh, anyone in your family, taking care of them, and without without thinking of them as someone that he could use for his own pleasure. Uh, you could trust him to babysit your children. You know, this is the kind of man that you would want for a neighbor. But God is revealing to us his righteousness is not enough. Job's righteousness is, is not enough. Job is still a man with a fallen flesh body, a body that still is unredeemed. And even though his heart was devoted to God, there was an element of his heart, I believe, that was seeking to be righteous in his own works and his own goodness. So, I think we can see a picture. And, it, it, and the thing is, we have to under, we what Paul is doing is he's laying out a very offensive thing to us in Romans. And if we read the book of Job, you can see just how offended we get at this concept that God would permit the kind of pain in Job's life that he permitted. In our minds, un, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's no, uh, unrighteously, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Not unrighteously. Um, uh, what, what, undeservedly, that's what I mean to say. Um, we think that God just permitted all this undeservedly. Job didn't deserve all that. Says he was a good man, and God's still just like, yeah, go ahead and test him. Um, I believe what God was doing was refining his faith and taking his, his hope of his salvation off of himself and putting it back on God. Um, and I think that's what Paul is attempting to do in his own way, not through physical pain and suffering, that Job endured uh, as God was dealing with him. But as an apostle, taking the lofty arguments and thoughts that they had, that I'm doing a pretty good job and those Gentiles don't deserve the same kind of grace and forgiveness and uh, standing and, for, and relationship with God that I have because they, they haven't been at it nearly as long as I have. They haven't worked nearly as hard at it as I have. And God doesn't, if God doesn't honor us a little more highly than the Gentiles, then there's, that seems unfair. And Paul is breaking that down. And he's just saying, don't, don't think that way. That's not how God works. God does not look at a human being and go, I'm going to weigh in the scales what you've done and say, oh, you get to go to heaven because you're so good. And you people have been so bad. In fact, if you look at Romans, yeah, Romans chapter 1, we think he's only talking about Gentiles where it says they, they worshiped idols. But if you look at the, uh, the the call of the nation of Israel, even at Mount Sinai, even the very just Moses had gone up on the mountain to give them the law, and before he even got done and came down from the mountain, they were worshiping a calf and having a a wild uh, party with uh, probably some some sexual perversion going on uh, amongst among themselves. So they were no better as a people than the Gentiles, and that's what God was revealing. I think the book of Job, if we read it properly and don't get offended at God, that's, we, can, we can learn the same lesson through, through reading that book. Um, the problem is we get offended. We are so offended at God. We do not like God's way of righteousness. We don't like it. We don't like that it's by faith, by grace through faith, given to the humble who are acknowledging their sin because we don't want Hitler to be able to repent. <laughs> We don't want Stalin to be able to repent. And I'm not saying they did, but we don't want it to even be possible. We want to say, no, no, no. There's certain things God shouldn't even permit to be forgiven. And God says, I will forgive every sin, everything. Paul, the apostle, was a murderer. When his name was Saul, he was murdering Christians. He was throwing them in jail. He was wreaking havoc on this church, which was had faith in God and was trusting him and had, had been born again and had a beautiful experience happening with a move of God in their lives. And Paul was wreaking havoc on that, destroying the, attempting to destroy the work that God had done in his people and was doing in his people. And God had mercy on him. God has mercy on anyone who will have faith in him. He has mercy on whom he will have mercy. And we cannot, we get offended when he does that. So we just need to realize that we are just as deserving of his wrath as anybody else. 
And if he wants to save us by showing us our, our darkness and our unworthiness by whatever means he chooses to bring us to a place of understanding that it's not us that he's looking to for righteousness. He is looking to our faith. He is, he is looking to an acceptance of the gospel, an acceptance of his righteousness by faith in our hearts. That is what God sees as a righteous person, is one who has faith and trusts his promise, trusts his salvation, and not our own, not our own goodness, not our own righteousness. And we can bring any and every sin, no matter how deep, how dark, how horrible, to him. And it is redeemable. We are redeemable by the blood of Jesus. So we need to trust the Lord with our lives, with our hearts, put our hope in him. And that is actually the lesson that Job learned at the end of the book of Job. He's humbled. He says, I am repenting in dust and ashes. I thought I had this figured out. What I'm really seeing is that you are the righteous. You are the only righteous one. And I just need to, to submit to you and trust you. And God God brought him to a place of faith again, where he had been putting his hope and his trust in himself. And that's the beauty of the story. We want to concentrate on the, on the pain, and we just think it's, that's way too much pain to bring in somebody's life, all the stuff that Job went through. And it offends us, and we, we just have to understand, you know, whatever we've been through, God loves us. God is bringing, he wants us to come to a place of trust. And I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying that it doesn't offend me. It hasn't offended me. It has. But if we will put our faith in Jesus, that offense will leave and we will be grateful. When we are great, when we understand who we really are, the sin of our own hearts, the self-righteousness which we have and we think that we can offer to God and how, how perverted that is in God's eyes for weak, sinful people such as us to reject His righteousness and offer our own as Cain tried to do. Just, we've got to understand that's not the way of God. And it's hard. But by faith, we can receive, we can understand, and we can turn to God and trust Him. And we, Paul said in, in Philippians, I put behind those, I put behind the things that are, that are behind. What I've been through, I've learned from it, I put it behind me and I move on. I press on towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ. In Christ. Find, find it within your heart, if you, if you can to let your heart be humbled by your own sin and self-righteousness. And if we will do that and turn our eyes to Jesus, the humble, lowly servant who came to serve his Father and bring righteousness to sinners like us, we will be saved and our hearts will turn. We'll still have sorrow. I still cry over things that have happened in my life, foolish decisions I've made and pain that has come from those decisions and pain that's just come upon me without me having anything to do with it. I still cry. <laughs> it's sad. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a fool about it. I don't look back and go, oh, it's so great. I'm glad that happened. I'm not. But I do trust my father. I look to him for righteousness and I'm, I'm learning to let go of my own righteousness day by day. And I, I believe my faith is growing as I trust him and not myself. And that's the gospel. That's what the gospel does for us. And that's the only way we can be saved. So trust in Jesus. Trust His work on the cross. Not your righteousness. Not our righteousness. But His. And uh, that's where salvation and righteousness in truth exists in Him. <laughs>